All right, little tiny baby printer. Little tiny baby printer. Today, we're looking at something just a little bit different. Join us for the tiniest printer we've ever reviewed. Today, we have the pleasure of looking at a little tiny baby printer that has some of the modern conveniences that we're more used to in today's crop of new machines. This is the Geetech M1 Mini, and it's absolutely adorable. But on top of that, it does things like auto bed leveling, Z offset calibration, as well as other stuff like filament runout detection and nozzle wiping. So in a printer that's geared for the little ones, this is quite a feature set for only $160. But can it even print halfway decent? Let's unbox it and see if a real life child can actually use this machine. Hi, Dad! We got you a brand new printer here for you. Oh my goodness, a new printer! Let me take a quick drink of my pop, my 20 ounce normal sized pop before we get to opening it. It's delicious. I'm so excited about this printer, Daddy. Let's put it on the table. Yeah. Great job. Paul is our child today, and I have to say he plays the role pretty well. As we open the box, we're met with the machine inside of some foam. The thing is super cute and tiny, that's for sure. Now with more protective plastic and foam removed, we can clip the zip ties that hold the main motion system in place during transit. And that's about the size of it. You like that? Yeah, you like that. There isn't really much to do in terms of assembly, aside from installing the spool holder. Now this machine's meant to run 0.5 kilogram spools, but GTEC's got like an adapter thing that you can print as well to accommodate the larger spools. As it stands right now, the big spools clash with the power cable. Oh, what? I didn't do anything. Oh, why won't you just put the filament? It's, it popped out. <laughs> I'm gonna load it. Okay, put it on the spool holder, Paul. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the spool holder. Get I'm, it out of your mouth and put it on I'm, the spool I'm holder. I'm letting you know something. The yeah, spool why? hits yeah, the why? wire. Paul, Paul, I don't understand why you don't just... I just ask you to do simple things. <laughs> I hope this is a bit, because if not, <laughs> I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I am doing what you told me. <laughs> It literally does not fit. I know it doesn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> but we just opted to use one of our poly dryers as a filament roller and set that next to the machine for our purposes. And with the machine put together and powered on, we could begin getting to know the controls in the UI. This machine features one screen and one clicky wheel. That's all your controls and your display. That's everything. You scroll through with the wheel and you click down when you land on the thing you want. So for something so cheap, it does everything that you need it to do. I will say it's more than I was expecting. How about that? All right, I'm gonna let you pick purple oh, or orange. She's colored, she's colored, she's oh, colored. I think, <gasps> orange. You know, um, orange. Uh, you know what's funny? <laughs> uh, I'm just curious, they must have forgot our uh, the AMS. <laughs> <laughs> so let's cover some of the specs before we print a couple of things here. The printer ships with a direct drive extruder system and a Core XY motion system. It does seem as though you may be able to enclose the thing if you really wanted to go crazy with it, but I imagine it wasn't intended for that use. But generally speaking, for a printer aimed at a much younger audience, I imagine the ease of use features are gonna be higher on the list of things to do than the versatility and its ability to print stuff like ABS, for example. So when this machine began running an auto bed leveling routine, it blew me away. I wasn't expecting this to do that. And that's an ease of use feature rather than a wide cast versatility feature. Now that hot end heats to an adorable 230 degrees Celsius and then the hot bed is heated and heats all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius. The build volume is an absolutely massive 100 by 110 by 100 according to the spec sheet here. And for a young person that's maybe just getting into 3D printing under the supervision of like a parent or guardian for example, I think that build volume is plenty big enough. It can print up to 250 millimeters per second, which makes this Benchy print off in just under 30 minutes. That's not anything super crazy in terms of what we're used to on full-size machines, but for a kid's printer, that's pretty good. Ready? Mm-hmm. Nice, dude. Look at it. Uh, surprising, actually. Do you wanna? First layer, meh. 
the first layer, I was actually surprised on how fast it laid the first layer. And then of course, looking at the results of this Benchy, I've gotta say I was expecting it to be quite a bit worse. Really, I wouldn't have guessed that this machine actually made this piece if you had them separate from each other. I mean, it's got its obvious weaknesses and stuff, but it's pretty clean considering the source. Much better than I was expecting. And you know what's not better than you're expecting? Subscribing to our Patreon. It offers almost no extra perks, but it also only costs $2. I mean, there's some perks, like you get a discount at keoprints.com and you get exclusive access to different content that'll never be posted anywhere else. But generally speaking, it's not like a crazy amount extra, but it's only two bucks a month and you're supporting us doing this full time. Click the link, have a look, see if it's something that you're interested in. We appreciate it. So once we had the machine set up and successfully printed our first Benchy, it was time to move on to printing something that wasn't preloaded on the machine, one of our own files. So I went on to Geetech's website and downloaded some printer profiles because I figured I was gonna have to make it. I didn't think it was just gonna be in Orca Slicer. That'd be silly, who would make a profile for this in mainline Orca Slicer? Well, not only does Geetech provide the printer profiles and everything on their site, but the printer is already listed in Orca Slicer. You just go select it. You don't have to do anything crazy. It's there. Also, they didn't try shipping their own slicer. They just used mainline Orca Slicer. Why can't everybody do this? It's crazy. Now, of course, the machine doesn't have Wi-Fi capabilities, so I'm not gonna be sending any prints wirelessly, but this is a refreshing change of pace. And with that in mind, I queued up our build volume tester to see just how tiny this thing is compared to all the other build volumes we've printed off so far. This was easy enough to scale down because we're just using Orca Slicer, so it's workflow that I'm familiar with, but I did forget to emboss the name of the printer onto this little tiny build volume, so that's on me. Otherwise, it turned out surprisingly fine. There's some gaps and areas of under extrusion again, but overall, like it comes back to the fact that this printer is cheap and meant for an entry level user and it does way better than I was expecting it to. I would even say this printer punches way above its weight. That's just what I would say. So here are some of the things that I've noticed in the short amount of time that I've been printing with this printer. For starters, the level of calibration on board this tiny little machine is actually pretty amazing. It does bed leveling like we talked about. It does Z offset calibration using this little post that's sprung loaded on the side of the build plate. And this may not sound like much, but really this printer does more complicated automated calibration stuff than my first Ender 3 V2, for example. On that machine, I had to add these features, and it was way more expensive than this thing. But that's not all. There's other smaller modern conveniences that have been adopted as well. For example, the build plate has a tiny little nozzle wiper on there. This is a key feature that ships with just about any printer you're going to get today, so it makes sense that it would be on this printer. Also, there's a filament runout sensor. You know, in case you've got a 24-hour massive print happening on your tiny little printer. You don't want to lose days of work because your filament ran out, regardless of the size of your printer. And then of course, we've got a direct drive extruder. This is super common to see. It makes sense that this printer would have it, but a lot of cheaper printers don't go that way. Also, according to the product page, this machine does input shaping and pressure advance somehow. Haven't quite figured that one out, but apparently it does it. Although judging by the Benchy, the top surfaces could probably be tuned a little bit more in terms of like pressure advance and flow rate stuff. Though with this machine being marketed as a budget option, I am sincerely impressed with the level of detail, especially considering how truly basic this machine actually is. It's a good thing. Now, another thing that kind of surprised me was the speed of this machine. It's not the fastest machine, of course. It's a little tiny baby cheap printer, okay? Let's get that out of the way. But based on the amount of plastic that's literally holding the thing together, it's kind of surreal to watch this printer fling that tool head back and forth so quickly. It's pretty good. So overall, it's safe to say I'm impressed with this little printer. It's definitely something that's geared for a very specific user. It's not gonna be like something that I use all that frequently. It may not be something that you're gonna use that frequently, but it is pretty impressive, especially given its feature set. This isn't gonna be competing with like the Bamboo A1 Mini or anything, but I could see this as an excellent entry-level option for a young person that's looking to get into printing plastic stuff. It's cheap, it already exists in Orca Slicer. It prints at a level of quality and reliability that's a lot higher than the stuff that I started on. 
and I could see this being well suited for the younger audience. Although I would caveat that with, you're gonna need parental supervision and some help getting prints going on the machine. It's not just like running from an app off your phone. But out of the box, it's a pretty good way to get a young person interested in creating things and being creative in general. So thanks to Geetech for sending this printer over. It was kind of fun doing something different for a change. If you want to get one for your kid or yourself, go ahead and use that affiliate link below for more information. Otherwise, check out keoprints.com if you want to get some merch. This one says Team Bamboo, if you like bamboo. If you don't like bamboo, there's a Never Bamboo t-shirt as well. Give our Patreon a look if you want to support our efforts to do this full time and bring you more content consistently. Bye.